It's Monday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Moriah Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the ladies with me. Hello, BC. How are you doing? Hi, today? I'm doing amazing. Yeah, Excellent really nice. morning. Thank you. Thank you. So um, I tried as much as possible to rest on Saturday. Had a nap in the afternoon because I walked all through uh, Friday to Saturday and I just had to chill a bit. And uh, yesterday we went to Alagbado for Yay. church. We yeah, visited grandma, grandma and grandpa. Yes. And we had a good time. We're back home in the evening. The kids are on me time, so they are home. I'm happy that they are sleeping. They are going to be waking up late. Yeah. They wake up as late as 12 noon. <laughs> yes. So they are, they, they've done a lot of work. And I was really impressed with their results this half term. So they need to take all the rest that they can get. So while I focus on working towards my trade fair, that's going to be happening first week of November. Fantastic. Yeah. Well done. Busy Thank season. You. Yeah. How are you Very doing, Nima? I have very little time left. Just say. So I just want to beg people to say they expect them to be a waste on the express. Presently, they are so still saying mm. the Uwoshiki, uh, Papa Express. We are those people from, from Koka all the way to Sele. They wake up every morning, come out with their nylon bags, and drop their waste on the road. And there's a dead body just <coughs> around Sonia Bosco. Please, mm. the authorities won't want to, did not go. They call it, I could not banter, but they didn't go. Yeah, so please do the right thing. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't go. Oh, actually, not go. Try go. seven six seven. Uh, uh, I, I tried, but I, I didn't uh, press it for that. Mm. I was driving, but I tried one to one like a park. He didn't go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very good. Um, Saturday was extremely busy, so Sunday was extremely sleepy. I visited five sites on Saturday. My tired was tired. Because um, since I started my LBS program, I haven't gone to do site inspection. And I could see the drop in our sales. Nigerians are so used to them people. They want to see, they want to see me on the site. Like, as you are standing there, this one that you are standing on, let me deposit for it. Mm -hmm. So I had to go to all the locations and then give updates on two of our estates that we have fenced already so that clients can then know that this is what has been happening, especially for those in diaspora. But I'm extremely grateful to God that I was able to sleep and rest and I'm feeling very refreshed mm -hmm. and happy. Starting this for the week's week. work. Yes. Fantastic. Well, How are you doing, Mo? It was fine. Weekend. I, it was we also a very, fairly busy weekend for me. I can't remember what I did, but I know it was busy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, a lot of things happened. I was in and out Sunday activities, but I thank God, yeah. <laughs> See, you look like, like a baby this time. morning. Honestly, and it looks works. So. Hair, no, 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 it's, it's just, good. It's good. Know, it's just styling. It's, good. it's all good. Let's go on a break. We come back, we'll go through the front pages of the papers. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Let's start with the nation. Security alert in Abuja to forestall attack by bandits. IPOP to meet federal government at Supreme Court. NDLE arrests four wanted kingpins over 16 tons of drugs. I'm fit to rule, says Tinumbu. Floods, Lagos begins dredging of canals. 542 stranded Nigerians evacuated from UAE. Telecom sector contributes $70 billion to economy, says NCC. Mm. Investors apathy threatens $10.78 trillion deficit funding. Okay, which story are we starting with? What's the major headline? Mm. 
But the DSS says that there's no cause for panic. It's normal for the countries to issue travel and security alerts to their citizens while they're traveling. And I'd like to read what they said. They said uh, they want that citizens should avoid all non-essential travels or movements in crowds and be on alert always in Nigeria. And they should review personal security plans and keep their cell phones charged in case of emergency. And they should also carry proper identification according to their embassies to their own citizens. And the DSS says it's not easy for us to start to move like that. It's normal and that every situation is under control. So I want to rely, since we are here anyway, under the DSS on what they have said. I hope that you know, whatever scared the countries outside have is taken care of it. Okay. okay. I'm going to take the NDLE story. So the NDLE has arrested four wanted kingpins. Uh, related to the 16,000 kilograms of cannabis uh, transported, be intercepted between Lagos and Abuja. Uh, the spokesman, Femi Mbabafem, was saying yesterday that um, a gentleman called the 40 year old Aru Adenide, they've been looking for him for weeks, mm. was arrested on Sunday, 16th of October, because of the involvement in 3,149 um, kilograms of the cannabis. There was another lady, Hawau Bashiru and Bashirat Adebisi Yahaya. They were also linked to about 90 kg of um, meth. While another person, Pastor Anite Okun Efiong of Promise of Zion Church, was equally arrested in Lagos, uh, involved in the Uyo charges. Um, they, I think it was about 5,640 kg of cannabis. Mm. With, there's a, there's a, so, the, part of the numbers, I mean, it's a success story from Canada and Delhi. We know they are working. They are working. It's always good that they continuously give us reports on who and who and name them. Mm. Let's have their names and know um, when they were arrested and where they were arrested, which is really important. So, I'm happy for NDLA. Well done. Okay. NDLA. So, the Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC, has said that the technology driven com telecommunications sector has contributed about $70 billion to the Nigerian economy. The Executive Vice Chairman, Professor Umar Dambata uh, had to state this while he was delivering a keynote address at a ch cyber chain conference at the Nigerian Air Force Conference Center at Kado Abuja. And he talked, um, the topic was uh, using technology to grow Nigeria's GDP. And he went ahead to give all the things that technology has done for the nation, saying the impact has been tremendous and it has become the sector has become um, a key driver to national economy so he also mentioned that the adoption of the 5g e-commerce fintech big data and other platforms has boosted the country's uh, internal revenue generation capacity and they are you know hoping to do more with it so he went ahead to say that uh, aside from the 70 billion that has been put into the Nigerian economy, it has provided over 500,000 jobs in the formal and informal sectors and improved the lives of millions. You know, explaining how uh, using the uh, technology, using phones has helped us. Even we as business people have been able to you know, navigate. And they're trying as much as possible to get everybody on board. Some people are still very uh, analog at the moment <laughs> and they're missing out on all the things that they can benefit from yeah. using technology. Okay, so making headlines, a sad story about investors' apathy. So, government, our current budget, we have a huge deficit. And the government was planning to source two thirds of the funds from um, local markets. What they realized is that many local investors are not putting their money on ground. So, out of the 100, the total money they were trying to raise, they could only get 53% um, taking advantage of this last offering. In a particular case, the government was trying to raise 75 billion naira each. In one trend, out of 75 billion, they could only get 7 billion. In another one, they could only get 15 billion. So people are not, there is an investor apathy within the system. They were saying it doesn't really mean anything bad. It just means that people were not subscribing as much. Maybe they are not ready to subscribe. But the managing director of um, Stephen Asset Management, that's Mr. <laughs> Tunde Amolegbe, was saying that it, it, it's an indication of the current mood of the market and that people are a bit watching and waiting for, to see a bit of stability. He said that um, it, it might be a short run, but it might pose a threat long term to how we're able to implement our budget in 2023. So um, he said that the under subscription might be driven by the fact that there is um, low system liquidity mm. and he's also saying that maybe if they see stability in the implementation of our policies, people might come back to start investing, but I'm worried about how the government tends to fund the budget if yeah. local investors are not putting in money. sell some work of our key assets. That no, that's different from this one. Yeah, I know, so they're going to help. It's the, part of the plan to yeah, yeah. get that 10 points, something trillion they're looking hmm. for. Now, wow. Let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we continue with our review. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. TVC Communications, we're all about our audience, millions of viewers, listeners, and readers every day all around Nigeria. Our two TV stations are among the most watched in Nigeria. TVC News is our award winning 24 hour national and international news channel headquartered here in Lagos, broadcasting live from our custom-built, state-of-the-art news headquarters. TVC, the top-rated family entertainment channel, is the place for fun, music, and information. With our breakfast show, Wake Up Nigeria, the all-female chat show, Your View, the best soaps and dramas from Nolly, Bali, and Hollywood, music and entertainment blast, courtesy East Flash, and of course, award-winning news and current affairs. It is all here. With news bureau and studios around the country and the ability to go live anywhere, anytime, we are first for breaking news in Nigeria. Awarded the NMMA TV Station of the Year, TVC News is the station of choice for news that is first, accurate, balanced and reliable every time. TVC and TVC News, watched by over 4.5 million people in Nigeria every day on Terrestria, DTH, DTT, OTT, and available to viewers in the UK on Sky TV. Watch all of our world-class programs on TV, online, and on our app. TVC and TVC News, the best entertainment and news for Nigeria, on TV and online. And when you can't watch us, listen to us. 102.3 Max FM Lagos and 90.9. Max FM Abuja are now ranked among the most listened to radio stations in Nigeria. Now, with over 1.5 million listeners every day, we're the people's favorite radio station. Best hit music, best on air talent. Max 102.3 hit music for Lagos and Max 90.9 hit music for Abuja. We are your home for that fun, entertainment, and hit music. In Lagos, TVC, our leading family entertainment TV channel, has a 47% market share. But this is just the start of our journey as we plan to add even more services to entertain and inform our ever-growing audience. Thanks for being part of the TVC communication story. Doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas, it shows in the canvas. It shows the conation of raw earthen material slapped, stroked and molded at a pace provided by the doubt and fear. Moving on now to the punch. FG subsidy spending to hit 11 trillion naira in 2023. 539 stranded Nigerians couldn't get UAE work <coughs> permit, says Nema. Dubai jails Nigerian lady for filming maltreatment, mm -hmm. family protests. Kerosene price soars by 118%. Ex convict rapes 12 year old open people to death. <laughs> PDP APC trade accusations over Tinubu and Atiku's <coughs> manifestos. Punch Investigations Editor wins top West African Journalism Award. FCT Risk Attack says U.S. Defense Headquarters are lazy fears. And FG may announce airport <coughs> concession winners this week. All right, Human Dubai. What yeah, Dubai? so an ex. Uh, okay, Dubai. Go Dubai. ahead. Yeah. So, them are Dubai. 542 <laughs> Nigerians were evacuated from Dubai, according to the Punch, and um, they included, sadly, 
79 males, 460 females and two, three infants. And according to some of their, you know, um, accounts, one of them said that, you know, she got legal papers to work in Dubai, but there was a change in their policies within the country. <coughs> in a short period of time, she became stranded. She couldn't get a job because of that policy. And she had to start to hustle, that kind of thing. The government just usually would change their visa policy based on whatever factors they see per time, not withstanding that some people have already come into the country before that policy. And then you make everybody already in the country start to run Elta Scout. And they uh, had to be evacuated. But it's sad that, you know, Nigerians are reacting to the issue ways I don't understand. Tokpe has a account. No, it's not in the other, country yeah, the, the, account? the other lady, did you take the lady that reported and then was jailed? No, no, yes. yes. So uh, this uh, particular lady, um, the family of Dinchi La, a uh, Nigerian lady who was, um, you know, um, jailed for one year. She was incarcerated for exposing the maltreatment of Nigerians at Dubai. So she apparently made a video and posted that video. And then she was, uh, you know, jailed for one year. So she wrote in the video, she said, I am the, at the Dubai International Airport and myself and some Tiger Nigerians with valid visas are being held in a room hours after arriving with no explanation and no information on what we can do. Please help me. There is more than 20 of us. So her family are calling on the Nigerian government to do something about this. She has a right to, you know, speak out if she's being treated. Uh, not Yes, and then a government just, you know, puts her in jail. One year jail term. We don't even know Sense how the trial happened. Prime. They call it cyberbullying. They that say that not allowed in, in their country. Said that video she posted included the face of a person. They shall find the way their laws covered it. Mm. Um, and Dubai is not a democratic nation. They mm. are enemies. We need to stay by and, the laws. Um, what is painful is that the visas, that these 500 and something Nigerians, pay, they pay for them. Mm. They pay for mm. the visas. Yeah. Visa, they pay for it now. Visa. Everybody, they pay for visa now. Everybody pays for visa. Yeah. You might not get visa. Pay for visa. So you made money. Yeah. People have legally landed in your country, but you are not giving back. You are not deporting them, making they're them not their work permits. You're not obligated. So after that, when you get to America, they can send you. They can send you back at this point, yes. They have their liberty to send you back. And they put it in your visa requirement. You that are paying for visa, you already know that they can they can send you back. It's inside the requirement for this. Yes, it is. I'm just saying. Another quick story, please. An ex-convict, Messi Orija. Uh, reportedly raped a 12-year-old pupil, uh, Janet Fakeye, to death in Abiyokuta Ogun State. Really? So this young girl uh, went to school, came back, finished her homework, and then told the father she needed to buy soap detergent to wash her uniform. So the father gave her money, and she went to buy. Unfortunately, on her way back, this uh, ex-convict, who was just recently released because he, was, uh, he assaulted somebody, a POS lady sometime, and was jailed, and he was just recently released, just grabbed her into his family he house, her to tied death. her up, raped her to death, then dumped her body the next compound and ran away. So the father kept waiting and then went to the shop to ask for her. They said she had bought the soap and she had left. Went to a friend's house to look for the poor girl. They said they didn't see her. And on her, his way to the uh, police station, they found the Good. dead body. That uh, So he's calling for justice. The police has confirmed the story, said they are ready you know, searching for this. Okay. Uh, I'll take the story about kerosene price hike. Um, sadly, they said household kerosene might be out of the reach of poor Nigerians. Many Nigerians depend on kerosene as a means of um, cooking. Mm -hmm. And this commodity, the price has increased by over 118% in just the past 12 months. So mm. before, um, as at September 2022, kerosene is selling for nine, no, no, that's the H HHK, Paid by consumer in 20, to September 22 was 947, indicating an increase of 17% as compared to 809. So between nine, between September, August and September, there's been a 17% hike. And in in Eboin State, they were selling for 1,227. And um, the, it's the price is just across Jumping. all states. Some states, the state, some states are selling for 700 and 15 Naira, Nasarawa for 735, Rivers for 600, and, but every state there's been over a hundred percent hike. I wanted to feel like this is the most consumed yes. by the ma masses. Majority yeah. of people who still cook with no, but Nima, there's one, so some, some states are, are buying for 1,200 per liter oh, oh. of kerosene. Mm -hmm. Hey, so we're subsidizing. The okay, let's move on to Vanguard. Which to suffer the I'm okay. Presidential race is not a wrestling bout. <coughs> Anti-party PDP in dilemma over Wike and others.
2023, Northern APC Christian Forum asked Lalong others to resign from Tinubu's campaign council. Don't politicize uh, flood, Aqua Ibom Delta tells federal government. Peter Obi seeks urgent declaration of flood disaster emergency. <clears throat> Labor kicks against secret sale of Polaris Bank. Atiku Okowa campaign mocks Tinubu over empty <clears throat> Kano streets. Insecurity fueling malnutrition in Nigeria, says UNICEF. And 542 Nigerians deported from Dubai. Okay, which story are we starting with? Insecurity. Um, Peter Obi has already, Peter Obi, had, um, that's the presidential candidate for Labour Party, yes. had mentioned that he was pausing his campaign because of the flooding um, that happened in some parts of the country. And now he's saying that it should be a national emergency for the states where it happened. He said that the infrastructural damage is extensive. Mm -hmm. Then the areas by Elsa states, um, he mentioned how this also affected Anambra states. He listed a few of the states where there was no, it wasn't just about, it was the infrastructural damage that took place beyond mm -hmm. the lives being displaced, that there should be a national emergency on this issue. He also commended the president, or I mean the governor of Bielsa State, that's Governor Joe Diri, for his um, proactiveness and his response to the challenge. His, um, Benue also is part of those that have had major issues with flooding, and I'll just say, let us all do what we can. Let's not wait until politicians, let's not politicize it. So the account, uh, there's a headline there saying, don't politicize mm -hmm. the flood by the state's government, talking to the federal government. So um, Delta, Akwai Bomb, and um, Bayosa, but the paper carries Delta particularly. I'm responding to the federal government, Shio Garba's um, comment that, you know, they should come and explain what happened and how they Spend. expended eco the <laughs> ecological funds within those states that are so affected by the <laughs> floods. That's the federal government saying the floods were not necessarily as a result of just opening of the, um, the, dam. the dam in Cameroon, that, you know, these states get these funds to prepare yes. for the opening. And so they should explain how that the money the and and all in all proper that preparations. And so they now responded to the, to the federal government that, you know, stop politicizing the issue. And they didn't necessarily explain questions mm. or address so sometimes we always yeah, yeah, because the country is bigger than the federal mm. government we have we, some things you need to deal with and prepare locally mm. and so the most experience. so also um ashwaji bola metinimbu was at in kano and that's where he was he, he gave 100 million euros to the to relieve for the flood victims within that state and he also said that he's okay he doesn't look sick if you guys watch the video he was saying that um he's neither running for a hundred yard uh, March of 500 yard race, <laughs> and he's not also preparing for a WWE wrestling bout. He's <laughs> actually running, what he's running for is, is, is a knowledge based job, which mm. is the presidency, and that he doesn't look. He said, Do I look sick? Actually, you know, he didn't them, look sick. Because you know, so. I've been the one to say on this show that he looked frail. But in this particular video, I watched it and I was surprised. He came back. Yeah, they did Andrew something in the UK. The Whatever they are doing in the UK to all our presidents and presidential they should come and do it in Nigeria so that oh, other yes. Nigerians can, can refresh also too. refresh. You know, <laughs> it's a good so, thing. Obviously, it was preaching unity, diversity, peace, and prosperity, and um, said that that's the mission of he as, as he comes into. He's going to run and give his whole 100 percent attention to Nigerians, and he will not. Um, Spend fifty percent in Dubai. I know who we're talking to. We were talking to and fifty percent in Nigeria. You know oh, sure. So the United <laughs> Nations Children's Fund (UNICEF) has identified insecurity as one of the major factors fueling malnutrition in Nigeria. Uh, they are cautioning that um, if nothing is done, no decisive step is taken. All the efforts they had put in would just go to waste. Uh, they said. Um, that 17 million malnutrition burden is on Nigeria, and Nigeria ranked the highest in the whole of Africa. Mm. And we're not even planning or meeting the sustainable development goals. So at, with that in mind, we need to uh, work hand in hand with different sectors. Every sector needs to contribute. And one of the things they also saw is the fact that uh, most of these uh, places where they have children that are malnourished is more in the northeast so all the collaborations we need to do that they are trying as much as possible to you know alleviate this from the people but the government needs to do more because it's the government that you know owns the people and they have to support with everything they have to ensure that they inculcate it even in the primary health care center nutrition you know anytime you go to the hospital people around that area must be able to feed and feed well mm -hmm. nigerian tribune Tinubu atiku in fresh row the baller draw drowns after rescuing mm -hmm. five flood victims in Bayelsa. Oh. Nigeria committed to ending open defecation by 2025, says Minister. In short, flood victims to get prompt payment of claims, says NICOM. LG evacuates 542 stranded Nigerians from UAE. 
uh, why Nigerians ship owners may lose out from the 19 billion dollar Dangote refinery. For no inaugural 804 houses to resettle displaced persons. Police arrest IPO commander destroys shrine camps in the Boeing. Okay, which story are we doing? Nikon. Okay. Right. Okay. So the National Insurance Commission, still on the flooding issue, Mr. Rasak Salami, the head of corporate communication and marketing market development of NICOM, has made a pledge that everyone who was insured, everybody that was insured, will be getting their, their um, compensation paid early. That they are working with all insurance companies to, uh, to alleviate the challenges that those that are insured are facing. If we recollect the flooding, as, as we've lost 603 lives in the flooding, 2.5 million people were affected. One million persons, you know, have been displaced. 121 houses completely damaged, 82 houses partially damaged, 108 hectares of farmland destroyed and fully submerged. 332 hectares of farmland in the country completely submerged. That there's nothing from those places. So for the farmers, anyone who had insured against flooding, they are saying in a short while, they are working with all insurance companies to pay them for, um, for those insured. But those who are not insured will have to wait on the government to find a way to mm. or so well many Nigerians to support them. Mm. So sadly, another um, story from Bayosa. So this 31-year-old footballer, NS Pere Mobile is an Ijaga, it's named the Twiston, <laughs> died in um, Yenogwa local government mm. oh. on his way. He was going to another community around that area and he was in um, a boat with other five other occupants and that boat um, capsized by crashing into the jetty. He, because he could swim, helped all the five occupants with him, mm. helped them to safety, but died of exhaustion. Oh, oh God. Swimming that water, he <clears throat> got tired and, you know, he, he died, drowned. he drowned, and oh. then they found his body. Two days later, they deposited the body. It's just so sad that, you know, this footballer had so many recognitions and awards. His career was going well, and, you know... Oh. It was doing a good thing. was doing yeah, it. Yes. Yeah, he he a doing hey. But he states here, SP Chris Anyangwu um, was saying that they've arrested, they destroyed, actually, a camp and a shrine that is owned by IPOB, and they also arrested quite a number of kingpins within, within, that, within that sect. According to them, they were able to recover 12 bulletproof jackets, eight sets of military camouflage uniforms, two cam gas cookers, 110 rounds of FNC live ammunition, 40 rounds of GPMG live ammunition, in fact, mm. empty cannons of also of single barrel guns, nine powerful ammunition. So they are they are well equipped. Mm. You think they're going for war, you know? And they, could, they also seize their vehicles. So, I'm, I'm happy they were able to um, arrest this. They were able to arrest them, which was a good thing, and they run down and destroy the entire the shrine mm. and where they were. Mm. We have to wrap up. I'm not sure we can take any other papers. Um, I think we run out of time. Completely. That's all we can take on front page review. When we come back, we want our hot topic of the day. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hmm. So. Have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail. Or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues and last but not the least a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate and yes you guessed it women so if you catch the drift then you're on to something we will provide you with the right insights into most of your curiosities right here within this beautiful cocktail we call the black table hmm TVC Communications, we're all about our audience. Millions of viewers, listeners, and readers every day all around Nigeria. 
our two TV stations are among the most watched in Nigeria. TVC News is our award-winning 24-hour national and international news channel headquartered here in Lagos, broadcasting live from our custom-built state-of-the-art news headquarters. TVC, the top-rated family entertainment channel, is the place for fun, music and information. With our breakfast show, Wake Up Nigeria, the all-female chat show, Your View, the best soaps and dramas from Nolly, Bali and Hollywood, music and entertainment blast, courtesy East Flash, and of course, award-winning news and current affairs. It is all here. With the East Bureau and studios around the country and the ability to go live anywhere, anytime, we are first for breaking news in Nigeria. Awarded the NMMA TV Station of the Year, TVC News is the station of choice for news that is first, accurate, balanced and reliable every time. TVC and TVC News, watched by over 4.5 million people in Nigeria every day on Terrestrial, DTH, DTT, OTT, and available to viewers in the UK on Sky TV. Watch all of our world-class programs on TV, online, and on our app. TVC and TVC News, the best entertainment and news for Nigeria on TV and online. And when you can't watch us, listen to us. 102.3 Max FM Lagos and 90.9 Max FM Abuja are now ranked among the most listened to radio stations in Nigeria. Now, with over 1.5 million listeners every day, we're the people's favorite radio station. Best hit music, best on air talent. Max 102.3 hit music for Lagos and Max 90.9 hit music for Abuja. We are your home for that fun, entertainment and Hit music. In Lagos, TVC, our leading family entertainment TV channel, has a 47% market share. But this is just the start of our journey as we plan to add even more services to entertain and inform our ever-growing audience. Thanks for being part of the TVC communication story. to stay with us. So according to reports reaching us over the weekend, a uh, senior lecturer at the Federal University of Lafia, Nasara State, Dr. Fred Ayokai, alongside his children on Friday, brutalized a 20-year-old girl, Blessing Matthias, <coughs> excuse me, who allegedly fought his daughter over a man. Mm. On the show today, we'll be discussing the aftermath of these fisticuffs, um, the unthinkable that unfolded and how a whole family got dragged into this humiliation. What are your thoughts on this? Um, how could this have been avoided? You can call us on 0812 You can also tweet to us at TVC. Can I please hashtag your view TVC so we can read your tweet? Um, at some point, maybe we'll be able to show some of the videos. Mm. It was quite um, heartbreaking mm. to see a young girl, 20-year-old, being beaten up and stripped naked by some people just because she and her <laughs> colleague we're fighting over a man, and this is just a painful situation. Um, Nima, I know you, you, you were really passionate about this story. Tell ah. me exactly. I didn't have work over the weekend. So <laughs> I was following trends on Twitter, and I saw this story. So this lecturer, I was initially provoked, and people were tagging us. So that was how I went to check what was trending. People were tagging the ladies of your view to discuss it. I saw the video of the girl being beaten, as in, this one passed beaten. The girl was pomated. Bomb sticks. <laughs> The lecturer of the Nasrawa State, Univ uh, State University, Lafia, <coughs> had a big stick he wielded <coughs> on this girl. So I wanted to know what happened. We kept following. And then I saw a video of the girl herself that was being beaten, slapping the daughter of the um, lecturer and, you know, rushing her, beating her over a man. Hey. So she claimed in that video saying, you have the picture, you have the phone number of this guy. Open your phone and delete that number now. How did you get the number? That one kept saying, the daughter of the lecturer kept saying, if you want to have this conversation with me, you need to be calm. You can't be shouting down at me over this. Ask your boyfriend who called who and who, toasted how, who? who toasted who. So you, these are, you can't be, 
You know, she was trying to be calm and being the biggest. So the girl rushed her, she lost her temper. You people don't want the other side. Go ahead, go ahead. That close business. So we are still in business. So the daughter, the girl beat up his daughter in that video. But this were like of like yeah, a afri yeah. two girls fighting but although that one didn't um, respond and that was enough for the man to say take it to court they had the video evidence but the lecturer showed that lecturer of conflict resolution and something something <laughs> go shock you you know now carry is conflict <laughs> african way <laughs> by summoning the boys of the family all of them enter moto go there yeah they beat that girl beyond because they met, they barged into her room. She was half naked. Oh, they entered her own space. Her own yeah. space. She was trying to put on clothes. They did not wait. They did not give her privacy to come outside to address the issue. They were in her room, and the brothers were slapping her into the um, the by, um, burglary bars ah, in her room window. Jesus. That one did not do them. Father who did not come in. Mother who spirit did not come in. No Abiyamo spirit in any of them. <laughs> they beat that girl into the main road outside. Beat her so much, rolling her on the floor, asking her to be on her knees. The girl, the, his daughter, saying, I will not hear, sorry. They kept saying, apologize to her. She apologized. They said, no, you are faking it. Ah. And then the lecturer now, inside my bed before. Carry <laughs> there. I was watching it. <laughs> <and> <laughs> I was shocked <laughs> that a man, a father, mm. took scissors to eh? the top of that girl. Eh? And cut, you want to check all the links. I sent all the links. Cut the top of that girl to that, so that she was half naked. Oh, Ooh. God. And they were beating her like that. Half naked. They humiliated this oh, girl. Oh, no. Immediately. He, as in anybody that watched that video. So the excuse of those who tweeted the video of what started it. You know, old waters when oh. I saw the oh, out of proportion reaction. Yeah. Mm. Over proportion. And there was an elder. They said the elder, I know the D house, may picking her bed. But this mm. one, he now he bent the head as if he, he disgraced himself. Oh God. And I think that even Asu should be ashamed on his behalf. Yeah. The NUC should act on this. You should take it beyond at uh, the proportion. You must finish the show. Yeah. Yeah. Must Let's just be very No, I think that's no. the when, when I first saw the topic, I felt, oh, this is not a Molly topic. Mm. Like, Boy, two, two girls fighting mm. over a boy mm. on a Monday morning. Can we just discuss many more serious issues? But it goes beyond that. It, it could have started as two girls fighting over a boy, but it went beyond that into brutality and human rights abuse, yeah. assault, when adults, who should know better, decided to take laws into their hands and implemented jungle justice. There was even no justice in that situation. Yes. The justice would have been for them to pursue the rule of law. What they did was beyond reprehensible, and I think it is important we talk about it because some people still feel like and I told him how upset. Many of us, we do this thing small, small. <clears throat> my son was bullied. My son now insulted the bully back a year after. The bully cried and reported to the school. My son wore bully jackets. The school has a jacket they, they, wear, you, they wear. If you have, if you do anything, anybody in the school will know. Mm -hmm. And you wear it all around the school that day. And they will make you go around the school. Mm -hmm. So the entire school knew this boy did something wrong. Mm -hmm. I was very, very sad. And then I now confronted my son. And the twin brother said, this girl was the one that was saying this, 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 this last year. And we reported to you. And you didn't do anything. And I didn't do anything. So what happened was, their assumption was, ah, why didn't you, why, um, in the insulting back was normal. No, we need to learn to, and I told him, I said, you should have reported to the school authorities. Because now you insulted her back and she reported. When you don't, when you take laws into your hand, things can get out of, yeah. uh, it will go out of proportion. There was no justification for that beating. There was no justification for the video being recorded. Uh -huh. If they are just following the rule of law, don't swallow and feel like I am being victimized here. The girl felt victimized. She went to tell her, her father. Her father felt, let me go and support my mm. daughter. Yeah, and now, you are going to end up in prison. Mm. Whichever way that man He's will end arrested. up in prison. He's been arrested and he might end up in prison just because he was trying to do something. No, let's follow the rule of law. So Respect that, it, it. It's a very messy fight because very. I don't know why they will bring boyfriend and girlfriend gist and break up and fight to me as a parent and then I will pack up, hey, carry my bag, call my sister, so yeah, Nima, join me, so, hey, let's go, hey, let's go and let's fight. Go and defend. Go, yo. I would ask you why you are in the university in the first place. That's the first question. Mm. You are there to study. Why are you fighting over a man? To get to a point where you fight over a man is because you've lost respect for yourself. If the man that you are dating decides to follow somebody else, let him go. That means he doesn't deserve you. Why? I, that, that's even the first thing that I would handle. Why would I go find myself in a position where I am fighting mm. for my child because she got into a fist fight?
fight with another man. That's so disrespectful. And this man, this lecturer, I believe, must be punished for this. Because you are a lecturer. You're supposed to be knowledgeable. You know You're better. supposed to oh, know what? better. You're supposed to be at least above board, even if you have bad character. With all your studies, is it not supposed to be changing somewhat? You should have a conversation, even if you want to get involved in this. You already have a video evidence that your daughter was beaten. Take it to the proper authorities. Follow through if you want to support your daughter to fight that fight. I don't even know why you're supporting your daughter to fight over a man. Follow through on, exactly. Follow through on that fight. I always raise um, children around me to be able to have dialogue. And sort out their issues. Sometimes when my kids are doing bang, 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 they are fighting and everything is happening, I don't get involved. I sit down, cross my leg, watch my movie, eat my chips. And then the father will say, go and find out what it is. I say, leave them. They need to start social learning yeah. social skills yeah. to resolve conflict. I can't be wading in every time they call, mommy, somebody did this to me, and I'm jumping in mm. to their rescue. No, allow them build the skills because tomorrow I won't be there for them. They should be able to stand on their own. So what are you teaching these young girls that they, it's okay to go for reprisal fight? Mm. We have issues of um, uh, when this uh, headsman started in uh. Benway, where they come here, they attack, and then the uh, yes. community people go back for reprisal yep. fight, and we see how that ends. Is that what we're teaching our generation now? Okay, that's so painful. I think, I think pretty much we've hit the line. I think the most, the, one of the most important reasons why we want to take this story is to ensure that justice is served and to justice let people, even served, the, especially yeah. the police, know that the story has gotten to us and it's important that the parents are, able, are, are brought to book for what they did. Yeah. The adults in this must be brought. In fact, all of them are adults. All, all of them are 18. Even the children, they're all, mm -hmm. they're all at least 18 years old. So they should actually pay for what they've done to this young person. I think that's all we can take on this story. Let's go to break. When we come back, we'll take on other stories. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. At TVC Communications, we're all about our audience. Millions of viewers, listeners, and readers every day all around Nigeria. Our two TV stations are among the most watched in Nigeria. TVC News is our award-winning 24-hour national and international news channel headquartered here in Lagos, broadcasting live from our custom-built state-of-the-art news headquarters. TVC, the top-rated family entertainment channel, is the place for fun, music and information. With our breakfast show, Wake Up Nigeria, the all-female chat show, Your View, the best soaps and dramas from Nolly, Bali and Hollywood, music and entertainment blast, courtesy East Flash, and of course, our award-winning news and current affairs. It is all here. With the East Bureau and studios around the country and the ability to go live anywhere, anytime, we are first for breaking news in Nigeria. Awarded the NMMA TV Station of the Year, TVC News is the station of choice for news that is first, accurate, balanced and reliable every time. TVC and TVC News, watched by over 4.5 million people in Nigeria every day on Terrestria, DTH, DTT, OTT, and available to viewers in the UK on Sky TV. Watch all of our world-class programs on TV, online, and on our app. TVC and TVC News, the best entertainment and news for Nigeria on TV and online. And when you can't watch us, listen to us. 102.3 Max FM Lagos and 90.9 Max FM Abuja are now ranked among the most listened to radio stations in Nigeria. Now, with over 1.5 million listeners every day, we're the people's favorite radio station. Best hit music, best on air talent. Max 102.3 hit music for Lagos and Max 90.9 hit music for Abuja. We are your home for that fun, entertainment, and Hit music. In Lagos, TVC, our leading family entertainment TV channel, has a 47% market share. But this is just the start of our journey as we plan to add even more services to entertain and inform our ever-growing audience. Thanks for being part of the TVC Communications Story. Hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together 
the perfect cocktail or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues, and last but not the least, a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate. And yes, you guessed it, women. So if you catch the drift, then you're onto something. Thanks for staying with us. Now we have DSP uh, Raman Nansil, spokesman, Nasrallah State Police Command. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. So we want to just find an update, get an update on what's happening concerning the arrest of the lecturer from Lafayette. Could you give us an update on what's happening right now? All right. It is no longer news that the lecturer, Dr. Fred Epa Yokai, and three of his children have been arrested. Mm. in connection to the case of grievous assault against one blessing Matthias, whose video has gone viral. We are still investigating them. His place of work has been notified, and an official letter has been written to them. We are rounding up the investigation, and we will be charging them to court by tomorrow or next. From the evidences gathered so far, um, what exactly is your own version of what happened? All right. From the investigation so far, the victim said to us that uh, she found out that the daughter of the lecturer by name Emanuela Epa Yokai, not her boyfriend. <laughs> So, she assaulted her, then in retaliation, Ella now went back to her family, immobilized, led by her father, they now went back, well, we have the abduct or take Ella to a non-disclosed location around Airport Road in Lafia, wow. in the bush. They assaulted her, tore her clothes, mm. naked her on the street. Mm. They beat and injured her and left her there. It was a good Samaritan that saw her mm. and took her out of that place. Oh. We mm. were now notified and she was rushed to police clinic here in Latvia for treatment. But she has since been discharged and she's still at home recovering. Mm. So, sir, is this a billable offense? How long can they be held down before uh, they are being taken to charge to court? These things happen during the weekend. That is why they are still in captivity. Okay. But as it is, by today or tomorrow, they will be charged to court. Okay. Yeah. Based on the evidence also provided, do you think Blessing also should be charged for initial assault of the young girl, of Emanuela? So far, so good. We are still making findings. But Blessing is still with us. We are still monitoring her. We are still waiting for her to recover. Mm. We will take all of them to court. Mm. Whatever the court decides, mm. that we will do. Okay. Mm. Thank you very much. So we just wanted to get an update and make mm. sure that this yeah. case is actually taken seriously. I know it sounds trivial, but it's sad that it's not trivial. So, I mean, the, it's not the, trivial. The reason, the reason the is trivial. Now is yeah. trivial, just, but so the, what happened is really sad. Yes, it's just so sad that you know. I think both girls are students of Nasrallah State University. And a so in his capacity, he's no longer just a father. Yeah, he personalized <laughs> the issue, and then the ta the the court style. Because in one of the videos, I heard him say, the brother saying to, listen, face my dad. And the man was cutting the girl's top with scissors. He said, you know, you are, in, you are, you are not in town. You are in a no, you are in a, a, an unknown, unknown place. 
the threats, the language. It's just so painful that, you know, this is somebody who is supposed to be in the capacity of local uh, parents, of a, not, not a guardian. A guardian. Yeah. As a lecturer, someone who should be able to separate himself. Yeah. Since you cannot even parent your daughter and tell her, focus on your books. I did not mm, say. And leave man alone. Or follow man, you know, because we call this thing village people. He is not even a parent fit enough to parent his daughter. Mm. Because the matter, should, in our house matter, he didn't <laughs> supposed to go outside. Oh. You know, but you took it outside. You took it local. You took it, uh, you took it as if you were taking. What yeah, you, you took a gun to a. To a to a so broom, fight. Broom, fight. broom fight. Broom, nah, broom stick okay, safe. Broom, broom, broom fight. stick fight. You carry gongo. -go. Bazooka. You know, as if... So what was the objective of recording it? I, 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 really, I, I don't think they understand. You know, sometimes I feel like a lot of people are ignorant. That's why I feel we should... I, I was happy we were discussing it. Because when we have conversations like this, some ignorant people are now getting informed. If you're going to do something like that, at least you will not record the evidence that will be used against, against you in court. You, yeah. as if you yourself recorded the evidence I mean, against you. So uh, I'm happy that the police, the police um, commissioner, sound. I, I like the way it sounded. It sounded like everything will be done to bring justice to all, and I think all parties will be getting justice here. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait to see the result. And this will serve as a deterrent so for others who might try to do also, this. I'm also. Um, you know, almost certain because the way they did the commando style thing, it, it, it could be that they have been used to doing things like they've been mm. solving problems like, like that. that. Yes. Very, so very if a uh, further investigation goes Use deep in, they people. may be able to find other people other corroborating the other witnesses it. who have suffered one or two things. Yes, from the same likely. family. His biography reads: Dr. Fred Ekwe Ayohai is a senior lecturer with the Department of History and International Studies. His research interests. Is on African economic and development history, intergroup relations, mm -hmm. peace, conflict, ah, sorry, peace, co peace is conflict and security studies, gender studies, uh -uh. Niger Delta studies, Benin studies, colonial and post colonial African studies, and it has one course, both <laughs> his research interests, okay. yeah, that you are researching gender studies, it's and you went for bra yeah. and naked woman. Um, you are doing conflict <laughs> and security, and your so conflict solving mentality. Oh, so right. you know, sometimes we need to check. It's not certification. Mm -mm. Yeah. Do the, you have it? Yeah. I think we've addressed this issue, and I'm happy that the police have this case. But I'd like yeah. to link the recording part to the other story about the young girl who was arrested in Dubai. Like mm. because mm. we keep recording every single thing. Azim. And this young girl, her name is uh, Miss Donchila. She was convicted under the United Arab Emirates laws for recording and circulating offensive videos on social media, according to the UAE crime law. <laughs> taking a video or photograph of someone without his or her permission or consent, posting such on social media is an offense punishable with one year jail term or a fine between $69,000 and $137,000, both jail term and fine. <clears throat> now, in this our country, <laughs> we have debated us, um, regulating social media. How do you do this? Oh, it's against it. It's our freedom of speech. They want to gag the press. They want to gag us. They want to do this. This country, as she rightly said, is not a democracy, yes. Yeah, nice yeah. However, in their, in their country, it is against the law mm. to record and post. Remember, there's even a um, training video of mm -hmm. the man that, that committed suicide. Mm. Somebody was recording him. She was there telling her that, hold him, hold him. The man jumped. You didn't see the video? I saw the video. I so I saw it. Thank God that you to hold the man. Yeah, but she, she was recording. There were other people holding. There were other people holding. Why you recording? He slipped with. So, so I'm, I'm, what I'm, the point is that we have taken this recording of As evidences in, to a different out of level. Out mm. Make a branch. And we need to address it. Let me, mm. let me branch quickly. Let's so, go branch first now. It is okay to eat kula not in Nigeria. But it is a crime. B J, um, uh, not billable in Saudi Arabia. It is a solution somewhere. It can be poisoned somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So this video that that girl made had a good cause behind it. Nigerians were particularly profiled, delayed in the airport, and Dubai did not explain why. They have been doing it to Nigerians, and they can do it to anybody. So it's a different matter whether you know the laws of the country you're going into. But you know, when you bring your solution from here there for a good cause, in those countries, it's also a crime that like we are the beach, the way Nigerians would do. Like me now, when I'm in traffic and stuck, and I'm seeing some abuse, I will do video. It's, a, it's okay here, except somebody has the laws that they want to show me on our cyber crime here. Mm. And you can post the video because you're posting it not with the intention, because we use mental laws. But how do you here. define we intent? Use, we, we, we establish intention. How yes. do you establish intent? You establish ment your, your, if your intention is to abuse the person whose face you are putting, and you know, 
profile that person or put that person publicly. You know, you're invading that person's privacy. That is your intention. Let me give it the girl's you. intention is not what Dubai... Because that's what I say. It's not a democracy. The girl's intention... You know, there are acts that constitute crime. There are those acts to, for them to really constitute crime in our own system here. There must be a mental Let intention me example, Nino. I hear to, Nino. to actually do that yeah. thing that you're accused so of. So let's just say I'm in traffic. <laughs> and I want to record the traffic. how bad the traffic is. Thank you. And I bring up my camera. Mm. While I'm recording, Somebody a young man is passing. Now, he doesn't want anybody to know he's in Lagos. Mm -hmm. His whole family thinks he's in Abuja. You don't know that. Said, you don't know that. Yes. You don't know that. Yes. We are recording in this yes. You don't care. Yes. But the man else passes. Now, in a, in, a, in a same country, he can sue you for posting that video because you have invaded his privacy. That's he, no. He's not, in the same country. I'm right. just saying that. Uh, in, no. in certain countries, let me say in certain countries. Even in certain Nigeria. Countries, mm -hmm. He uh, could, he could uh, sue no. you and say that, why would you post my video? Exactly. You're you're supposed supposed your video. Video. Yeah. I was supposed to be in Lagos. I knew my family was in Lagos. I'm in Abuja. And suddenly you have you done that. bad head. So, come on. So because That's you're recording the video, because you had a good intention. Mm -hmm. Your intention was to show the traffic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you can't show people joining the So it Let's assume we have that law in Nigeria. You know why it will fail? Where? I will tell the court my intention is to show the traffic, mm. the situation. But and you it could help. No, wait. It could help 1,001 people. Nigerian courts here, yeah, with my law experience of almost 12 years, it will, it will fly. Mm. It wouldn't be a crime. Because it's a democracy. Because I did not intend to see your face inside my camera that you are capers. Mm. I don't know you. I don't know whether you want to publicize, but I am trying to address a situation. You wear your one eyed mask up or something. You will, you will not fly here. But when you cross over to Dubai, they don't worry about what her intention were. Mm. They are following the law. They found the softest lot on jail that girl. Mm. That's what you think. And if, if so, no, 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 that's the truth. That's the truth. That's the truth. So, you know, um, your opinion as we opinion. remember don't call here truth. Nah, when the yes. man <laughs> was, um, you know, take, yeah, doing a video now. with, uh, in, I think in America, with, um, what's this? Uh, yeah, Arab Shola. And he was saying, you don't have a right to video me. And he went ahead. This is America. This is a free country. We always assume that when you travel out, everywhere is like America. I think we now need to start paying attention to the laws of the place that we mm. go into so let me give you an example for this dubai i was in dubai um a few weeks now or months and you know when we got there we saw some nigerians being stopped and harassed because there was a law that if you're not flying in as a family mm -hmm. you will not get visa so some of them got visa and claimed they were family and they got there and found they were not family so they were sending them back i went as, doing, a, family. That, as a family and i didn't have that issue so we need to be very certain that those people who are claiming the law was against them follow the rules that they had. Thank I you. went there very recently and I saw people at the airport being delayed. Let us say the truth. Being delayed because they did not follow, they did not come as families and they were being sent back. I wasn't sent back because I filled the visa as a family and I was there as a family. So if you keep the laws to the latter, these countries are not like ours that can waste some things. They are not smiling. When it comes to their laws, they take it very, very uh, uh, um, yeah. seriously. I was in Singapore recently, and they were telling me that they don't chew gum. They don't even chew gum. So you want to carry your big hand and say, after all, this is a free country. It's not your land. As you <laughs> it's not pass. Exactly. You cannot chew gum. It's not your land. It's not your free country. You can do that in your country. So you must learn the laws of the land before you are being held by the laws, and then you start shouting. If you can tick all the boxes, I don't think a country would just sit down and say, I want to profile these people because they are horrible people. We spend money in Dubai. We bring in most of their markets. If you enter into their markets, you will see it's that Nigerians, they want Nigerians, Nigerians, Nigerians to Indians. come. Because Nigerians are always buying. Nigerians are always selling. Nigerians are industrious. But when you now go there as a Nigerian, how do you react? How do you behave in that society? That's the peg they will use to rob every other Nigerian so that comes. You think yourself, like when, I, when I record now, if I'm in Dubai, I'm recording the malpractice of Nigerians and all that in the in airport. When I record that, what is my objective? Am I talking to Nigerian government to talk to Dubai? Am I talking to international courts to arrest Dubai? What exactly is the objective mm. for sending that video? Let's go on a break. When we come back, we'll dig further on this matter. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Come closer. A little bit more. Perfect. I have exciting news for you. You asked for it and you got it. Your favorite breakfast show, Your View, will be going to two hours. We're going to have in-depth analysis of the newspaper review and more conversations on the hot topics. The ladies of Your View and I will be staring up our guests to get in-depth into all the various topics. And you, our viewers, will have the opportunity to call in and share your views. After all, it's Your View. Join us on Your View, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. for a fantastic conversation. 
Don't miss it. Hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail. Or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues, and last but not the least, a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate. And yes, you guessed it, women. So, if you catch the drift, then you're on to something. We will provide you with the right insights into most of your curiosities, right here within this beautiful cocktail we call the Black Table. Hmm. Doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas, it shows in the canvas. It shows the conation of raw ether material slapped, stroked and molded at a pace provided by the doubt and fear. Every move weigh in the struggle of one to the other, merging the past to the present, brush strokes of colors seen but not known. For when the wailing stops, the pieces settle down in abject beauty erected for a century of a century. Speaking, advocating, protesting, as the arts are meant to be. At TVC Communications, we're all about our audience, millions of viewers, listeners, and readers every day all around Nigeria. Our two TV stations are among the most watched in Nigeria. TVC News is our award-winning 24-hour national and international news channel headquartered here in Lagos, broadcasting live from our custom-built state-of-the-art news headquarters. TVC, the top-rated family entertainment channel, is the place for fun, music and information. With our breakfast show, Wake Up Nigeria, the all-female chat show, Your View, the best soaps and dramas from Nolly, Bali and Hollywood, music and entertainment blast, courtesy East Flash, and of course, award-winning news and current affairs. It is all here. With these bureau and studios around the country and the ability to go live anywhere, anytime, we are first for breaking news in Nigeria. Awarded the NMMA TV Station of the Year, TVC News is the station of choice for news that is first, accurate, balanced and reliable every time. TVC and TVC News, watched by over 4.5 million people in Nigeria every day on Terrestrial, DTH, DTT, OTT, and available to viewers in the UK on Sky TV. Watch all of our world-class programs on TV, online, and on our app. TVC and TVC News, the best entertainment and news for Nigeria, on TV and online. And when you can't watch us, listen to us. 102.3 Max FM Lagos and 90.9 Max FM Abuja are now ranked among the most listened to radio stations in Nigeria. Thanks for staying with us. We're still discussing this young girl that was arrested in Dubai. Um, Toko, you're going to say something concerning this. So I, I love the point being made about videos, and I don't agree with Nima that intentions, because really, I, ca I can't judge your intention. I can only judge the impact of what you've done. Mm. So you might have the best intention, but your car jammed somebody, the person died. Whether it was your intention or not, it does not matter. What have you done? What you've done has resulted in the death of someone. So, I, you cannot go to a, a country and claim your intention for what is against their laws. Another thing that I, I need Nigerians to understand is, Nigerians are quick to see victim mentality. We are being punished. The tweets, everybody was like, they are doing this to us. They are, doing, they are not doing it to you. Mm. Like, we need to understand what is the, situ what's the problem, what, what was wrong. 
because everybody was now wearing that hat of justice for this girl, justice for her. She was wrong. She's been wrongfully in prison. It's not all system that is like, like, like that is bad. Where rules are disobeyed and justice is not served. So the idea of thinking this is being done to Nigeria is wrong. And I'm so happy that BC had her own personal experience in recent times where people were turned back. A few Nigerians disobey the rules in that community and expect that they will get away with it. That's wrong. A country can change their rules. Currently in Nigeria, I feel like we need to change the way foreign workers um, are allowed into the country and how they work here and how they're being treated. If their, if, if their system is going to stop my citizens from enjoying life, I will change my rule. You cannot stop me from changing my rule, Nima. Mm. A country can change their rule today and say, all of you foreigners re-register. Mm. And you don't re-register, that's your own pocket of tea because it is my country. Yes, it's let's, my sovereign let's even, nation. Let's even leave the country out of this. I want us to even take the conversation home. Let's bring it home. Our people Our like indiscriminate this. use of the social media without any kind of regulation. Every little thing. I just said a, a, a man committed suicide over the weekend. Now, somebody was recording. Yes, there were maybe one or two other people there trying to hold, hold, or hold they him. posted it. In a normal way. I mean, in, in, when, when things were normal. The person that was holding would also help him participate mm -hmm. to lift that person up. Without the energy. But no, she felt at least she's recording. Mm -hmm. Let the man, let them be helping the man to mm -hmm. come over. Why so, are you recording? The, everybody thinks once I carry a camera and the phone, I record and post. Now, even if you record for whatever reason, mm -hmm. do you need to post that on, for, for what? What exactly what was, was the objective of school to oppose? That was the, what was the objective. If I record it for my own keeps to record to have my own memory of what happened, that is different. But you now have the audacity to post on social media to what Thank object? Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Mm. That's the question. Like that. Let's start from the ocean. Start from wherever start you want. Start from anywhere. Start. From that point, that video she made, two other people or some other people were there helping that man. And they had him in grabs. And he pulled their hands and, and he jumped into the pool. Now, all of them were busy trying to help him. Nobody had an evidence of who was jumping. In a country where we don't have data, no identity, nobody knows. His family will, in 10 years' time, say, he, when he just walked away. He would never know. So, even though she did something that, in the minimum, looked outrageous, she did a service. Now, his family knew he jumped. Mm. At least, somebody would walk into social media and see that video, if it is still in circulation of which social media has their regulations. If the police or the data, the uh, population commission needs that data, they have it. If we had a proper system where she could drop the data, prob probably she would not. When they are looking for him, they will find him. I don't want but to Nima, see what she has done because there were other hands. Can I ask a you question? know before Can the smartphones came, no, no problem, you ask. Before the smartphones came, we used to say we were smart people, we didn't have the evidences. Mm. Police would abuse you, you cannot gather the evidence. Mm. Now the world has advanced to that point. We now want to throw away that solution so quickly. But we no, have reported here on this table mm. several times where bystanders or witnesses said they saw a man jump. Mm. They didn't need the recording. Yes. They told us and we took the They know the family. Let me take it. They know the papers. No. Usually they find the bodies. Usually we've had in this country. No, but sometimes they don't find the bodies. Yes. In this country. Is it Lagoon we are talking about? In this country, we have seen where people witness and they send a message to break a report to the police that we saw an old man jumping over. And then they well, go out and rescue him to find the body. People that did Sometimes not jump they don't. So at yeah, the so beach, can we, can I float from... Mm -mm, wait, to talk about They did not float from Badagri Beach. Mm. They floated from somewhere in Lekki, in one of the beaches, all the way to Cameroon. Okay. All the way to any of the other African countries. And their bodies, they, those were that did not drop, jump. So, see, we, the, he, she did a video. Yes, she could have dropped it and helped. But she got the evidence. She got the face of the person. So somebody, it will, it, it will help. help. Exactly. It but will help. Video to the no, that's if, one example. I'm coming to that before you answer. I want angry. to answer you quickly. If your intention I'm was good, you. you will take that video to the police. Police now will contact the family and say, this is how your husband That's also She's a good one. But she got the video. She, could, she might not have posted it, but posting it might just even help families who would not. Imagine you going to your nearest police station and the person has moved away from Padagri, for instance, all the way to Third Milan before he jumped. That's one example. On the, I'm not saying Saudi is, um, UAE is not a, a sovereign country. I have never on this table accused any country of their sovereign laws. I'm talking about legality, mm. trying a person and finding them guilty. The example of an accident leading to somebody's death is about foresight. It's not about intention that they jail that person. If it's about intention, everybody who hits and run a, runs a person that will not be running. You'll be able to establish, I didn't intend to hit him. I only hit him. The law will now say, what speed are you going on? The law is using your foresight to be able to see that when you're on a certain speed, holding your brakes can result in the loss of lives. And that way you get a manslaughter, a reduced punishment, because they still could not establish 
Intent, okay. Full intent Point to kill. Let me check this no, I'm coming to kill. Now, in this video that this lady made, this lady raised the issue so that other Nigerians traveling will prepare. Dubai never issued a travel advice. Nigeria said did not issue a travel eh? advisory okay. about Nigerians being detained, delayed. Dubai issued travel advice. I'm saying Dubai did not issue it. Issued. Nigeria that owned the country did not issue. Nobody knew no, until that video. Did, did you know? They did. For visa. No, I did you know? Delay this video. Wait, yeah, wait. Yeah, wait. No, it's okay. Yeah. I have not traveled. It's not a shame. Listen, I have to get it. I've heard you. This is it. You might calm down. I need you to calm down because I want to hear a different view. Okay, yeah, no, so, I, so, so, can I interested. finish saying what I'm saying? You said it, you made your it's point so, now. No, no, Some people on this table, they'll tell you, wait, I've not finished, and it's okay. So I want to finish today. <laughs> that lady made a video that until, up until she did it, most of us who have never bought that to apply to any country's embassy for visa found out that Nigerians are profiled and delayed. She didn't do anything until what? Dubai looks for a law. They didn't deal with law, the way law is practiced in all countries. How did you know? Including that? Dubai. They didn't deal with it. Because if intention was the issue, her intention wasn't to profile a person. Now she stayed her stay. She proved that her family came for her. She finished her stay. She was on her way out before she was rearrested and tried. And the least they could do was... The, this punishment carried a fine, an imprisonment, or both. At the discretion of the judges, the imprisonment was the best. We're talking about some... Things that, you know, we're, we're treating with levity. I'm not saying Dubai does not have a right to their laws or their country. But in real countries where you share relations, you look for the least. If Saudi could release that lady who had co um, some things in her bag, after years, because Nigeria continued to reach out to Saudi, Dubai, uh, UAE could do better. So let's establish that there's still 15 days where she can appeal. She hasn't appealed yet. Okay. The judgments gave a prison sentence or a huge fine. Maybe she hasn't paid the fine. Um... And on social media, there are lots of comments I want to take. Some supporting, some not agreeing. Corey, with, um, Corey Michael says, social media will be the demise of many. Mont Rushmore says, if there is no recording, that means it never happened. Lua said in the last today says, a lot of people record because they want to go viral, become influencers, or paint the government bad. You can record without doing it live on social media. Yet today, Shonaike says, it is called citizen, citizen journalism. Somebody said the recording is for evidence. Now, let me address the recording being for evidence. If I want to record injustice being done to me as evidence, I don't need to post it online. I can send to my lawyer. I can send to a friend so that the evidence is kept because a lot of things can happen. My phone might be seized and I don't have access to it or it can be deleted from my phone. I'll send to someone because if I post online, then these issues might happen. But if I was taken to court, if she was taken to court for maybe being returned back, she can try present them. It. She can present and say, Evidence. this is what they did to me. I recorded it so that I am protected. We have become a recording and posting country because America does it. Look at other, other country, civilized countries. It's not everybody that does this thing. No. It's mainly the Americans that do it. And we like copy copy so much, we are followed suits. It's not all things that are... That, can be excused into being good is the right thing for us to do. We need to conserve some things. That man that was committing, about to commit suicide, ha might have his own personal reasons. But you posted his face online. People have accidents. You post their face online. These things need to be stopped. It's not right. There's no excuse for it. Mm. No, don't say because they're recording it. And I know it, it might sound right that uh, his evidence is clinical. Don't record other people and post it online without their permission. Do your good and send to the police. All right. Okay, I think we can end Are we that. Ah. That's all we can take on this segment. When we come back, we bring in our guests. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail. Or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues, and last but not the least, a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate. And yes, you guessed it, women. So if you catch the drift, then you're onto something. We will provide you with the right insights 
into most of your curiosities. Right here, within this beautiful cocktail, we call the Black Table. Hmm. TVC Communications, we're all about our audience. Millions of viewers, listeners, and readers every day all around Nigeria. Our two TV stations are among the most watched in Nigeria. TVC News is our award-winning 24-hour national and international news channel headquartered here in Lagos, broadcasting live from our custom-built, state-of-the-art news headquarters. TVC, the top-rated family entertainment channel, is the place for fun, music and information. With our breakfast show, Wake Up Nigeria, the all-female chat show, Your View, the best soaps and dramas from Nolly, Bali and Hollywood, music and entertainment blasts, courtesy East Flash, and of course, award-winning news and current affairs. It is all here. With the East Bureau and studios around the country and the ability to go live anywhere, anytime, we are first for breaking news in Nigeria. Awarded the NMMA TV Station of the Year, TVC News is the station of choice for news that is first, accurate, balanced and reliable every time. TVC and TVC News, watched by over 4.5 million people in Nigeria every day on Terrestria, DTH, DTT, OTT, and available to viewers in the UK on Sky TV. Watch all of our world-class programs on TV, online, and on our app. TVC and TVC News, the best entertainment and news for Nigeria on TV and online. And when you can't watch us, listen to us. 102.3 Max FM Lagos and 90.9 Max FM Abuja are now ranked among the most listened to radio stations in Nigeria. Now, with over 1.5 million listeners every day, we're the people's favorite radio station. Best hit music, best on air talent. Max 102.3 hit music for Lagos and Max 90.9 hit music for Abuja. We are your home for that fun, entertainment, and Hit music. In Lagos, TVC, our leading family entertainment TV channel, has a 47% market share. But this is just the start of our journey as we plan to add even more services to entertain and inform our ever-growing audience. Thanks for being part of the TVC communication story. Come closer. A little bit more. Perfect. I have exciting news for you. You asked for it and you got it. Your favorite breakfast show, Your View, will be going to two hours. We're going to have in-depth analysis of the newspaper review and more conversations on the hot topics. The ladies of Your View and I will be staring up our guests to get in-depth into all the various topics and you, our viewers, will have the opportunity to call in and share your views. After all, it's Your View. Join us on Your View. 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. for a fantastic conversation. Don't miss it. Doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas. It shows in the canvas. It shows the conation of raw ether material slapped, stroked and molded at a pace provided by the doubt and fear. Every move way in the struggle of one to the other, merging the past to the present, brush strokes of colors seen but not known. Show now is a presidential candidate of the Young Progressive Party YPP, Prince Malik Ado Ibrahim. He's one of Nigeria's biggest exports, currently putting his motherland on world map with his brilliancy and uncommon wizardry. He will be discussing his presidential bid and why he wants to become Nigeria's next president. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Good to have you. So the first question anybody would ask. Ask you is why do you want to become president? <laughs> um, well, apart from it um, being my constitutional right to try to do this, I think the most important thing is that I just see some lackluster leadership that's out there and available to us. 
and I'm um, really trying to do some things differently and try to be a bit more of a modern um, ruler rather than the traditional old school leaders that we have. Mm. So, sir, um, we'd like to know some of your antecedents. You know, right now, everybody's looking for that Nigerian who has done something, who has a good track record. Can you tell us some of the things you've done that, that qualifies you for this position? I think um, right now, um, the position I'm in is that I, the type of leadership we need is one that um, focuses on some of the things I'm good at. Um, as far as uh, governance is concerned, I've worked at the United Nations for about four and a half years as an undersecretary for renewable energy that's working with 155 countries. Um, my expertise is in two fields, security and power. And um, I have a very strong uh, background, uh, especially in renewable energy. And I think that what Nigeria really needs to do now is reset itself. We, we need to get things right. We need to focus on the things that really get Nigeria back. And those are issues where I think that no other presidential candidate at this point in time has um, a very strong military background, a very strong uh, power building background globally. And um, I'm very proud of that. And it's something that I believe that Nigeria will benefit from uh, because I'm still one of the world leaders in, those, in, in the renewable energy sector. And I think that in a country where we're blessed with sunshine and a lot of natural resources, we can bring some of those things into the fore. And I'm really confident that um, Nigerians will, will, will gravitate to the way I'm thinking. And security is a big issue. Um, it's something that um, I've been at the forefront of uh, locally and internationally. Um, I build military systems. I do a lot of advisory work. And I'm very comfortable that over the next very short <clears throat> period of time, Nigerians will be able to see what I've done and how other countries have worked with me in developing um, uh, at least the, the strength of security. And right. That's why I'm very good at ah. Okay, sir. Um, I, I hear you, and I hear a lot of what we call in Nigeria, phone. And to a large extent, the majority of the population you seek to lead don't have that. They won't connect to your accent. Like, you speak so well, and the, that on its own <laughs> would be a reason people would not just want to listen. How do you intend to connect with the grassroots, with the majority of Nigerians that you probably haven't spent a lot of time with, to know how the shoe pinches them and be able to prefer solutions to them? Well, um, a man must not be judged by the way he sounds. I think it's the content of his, his heart and his mind. But I'm 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 quite proficient in different languages. I speak eight different languages. Um, wow, wow. My accent just happens to be one that reflects um, where I was um, educated. But going to the grassroots, I mean, we've had 30 odd years of repeated promises that haven't been engaged with or delivered on. And I, I, I'm just not sure that the young people of Nigeria are ready for another round of, you know, it's my turn, or, or I've, you know, people have done things and really haven't done things. And the only thing any politician can say today is that I've, I've been a politician. Um, if a man is um, telling you that he wants to run for an office and, and um, if he hasn't balanced the budget, don't be surprised when he gets into office and he, he doesn't balance the budget. Mm. We need to be on performance. And, and I think that what I want to be able to do is take this to the grassroots. But it's, it's, it's very difficult to come from a private sector and uh, open yourself, expose yourself to, to ridicule and right. conversation and yeah. dinner and breakfast table conversations. But this is my country too. And I just see so much that I do outside right. that I can do at home. Um, and it's not just about that. There's some really fundamental things that I think grassroots people can, can um, understand. I build things in Nigeria. I'm not um, somebody who's branded himself and I'm this and that, but you can go from Ibokoda in Ondo State to uh, Mayo Belwa in Adamawa State or in my, in my own state. I'm, I build things, I put power systems in, non government right. interference, uh, private sector driven. Um, I put, for instance, 80% of the power that goes into the Northeast, I've put on one particular um, industrial estate in three months. 
80 percent. That's five megawatts compared to the seven megawatts. Mm. Right. So amazing. Why? Sorry, go ahead. Why they use progressive party? You know, if you're being realistic about how politics is done here, you be in one of the major parties, and with your mm. resume, I um, think you were you had your basis or so maybe a uh, past in any of the parties. Why the Young Progressive Party? And did you were you in any other party? Did you leave those major parties? No, I've never been in politics before. Um, I'm not a politician. I'm a businessman, and uh, I believe that when you when you try to come into these all drawn out parties that feel that they can run Nigeria, you end up starting at the bottom. If you have great ideas, they never get to to come to fruition. You have to kind of wait till you're 70 years old again, and then you're too too old. Um, I'm, I believe the younger leadership that a young progressives party allows me and, and other Nigerians that want their voices to be heard, um, it's the place to be. We're a young nation, we have a lot of young people. Um, it might be a long shot to a lot of people, but you know, nobody can play God. We don't know what's going to happen. You only have to look at um, <laughs> Liz Truss or, 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 you know, she's there for 45 days, probably thought, wow, I've got this job and didn't last long. Or Donald Trump, a businessman that came in, not a politician, and, and he did a very good job in the U.S. He might be a little bit warped, but he did get in there and do some, some good things. And, and I, I'm just um, I'm fed up with complaining and um, trying to sort of barter my way into leadership. And I believe that um, you, you need your voices to be heard. They've, it's not just me. Quite a few Nigerians, I think, are feeling the same way. Uh, and I'm very comfortable with my decision. Um, we need to shake, even if, if the other parties are going to do well, they've got to get past people like me and prove themselves. We don't have right. an opposition party in Nigeria. Right. If something goes wrong, nobody brings government to task. Um, young people need to be able to bring government to task. We need to tell them that they're wrong. We need to tell them that you need to build that da dam after 40 years right. instead of continually <laughs> killing people. It's me things like that that I'm, I'm very comfortable with. And we're going to break for a second. When I come back, we'll dig further into exactly what you plan to do. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Till the world hears your voice. Till you take over the world. At all, we'll be giving you a 500,000 Naira educational scholarship for Zita. What? Yes! This is amazing! At all wants to rent a provision shop for one year. They'll stock it for you. Hey, God! Hey! Who am I to deserve all these things? Who am I? It's not over, it only just So we'll be doing minor refurbishment of the Mojitala Balogun Rehabilitation Center. Oh. Come closer. A little bit more. Perfect. I have exciting news for you. You asked for it and you got it. Your favorite breakfast show, Your View, will be going to two hours. We're going to have in-depth analysis of the newspaper review and more conversations on the hot topics. The ladies of your view and I will be staring up our guests to get in depth into all the various topics and you, our viewers, will have the opportunity to call in and share your views. After all, it's your view. Join us on your view, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. for a fantastic conversation. Don't miss it. TVC Communications, we're all about our audience. Millions of viewers, listeners, and readers every day all around Nigeria. Our two TV stations are among the most watched in Nigeria. TVC News is our award-winning 24-hour national and international news channel headquartered here in Lagos, broadcasting live from our custom-built, state-of-the-art news headquarters. TVC, the top-rated family entertainment channel, is the place for fun, music and information. With our breakfast show, Wake Up Nigeria, the all-female chat show, Your View, the best soaps and dramas from Nolly, Bali and Hollywood, music and entertainment blasts, courtesy East Flash, and of course, award-winning news and current affairs. It is all here. With the East Bureau and studios around the country and the ability to go live anywhere, anytime, we are first for breaking news in Nigeria. 
awarded the NMMA TV Station of the Year, TVC News is the station of choice for news that is first, accurate, balanced and reliable every time. Doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas, it shows in the canvas. It shows the conation of raw ether material slapped, stroked and molded at a pace provided by the doubt and fear. Every move way in the settled down in abject beauty erected for a century of a century. Speaking, advocating, protesting as the arts are meant to be. to stay with us we still have our guest sir are you still there yes i am so one of the greatest issues we have right now in today's government is the fact that government says they don't have money they raised about nine <laughs> nine billion of dollars in nine, nine i can't remember what the figure exactly for ne next year's budget and they're still looking for 10 point 10 something point trillion mm. deficit and the issue they're saying right now is they're trying to raise funds locally the um, domestic um revenue and they're also trying to increase taxes or use all the various um, apparatus they have within government to raise funds within the country. If you become president, how do you expect to increase our revenue generation, number one? And number two, how do you, how do you intend to tackle insecurity? Well, you know, one of the most important things that we need to learn from the budgets for the last 10 years or so is the size of government is enormous. Um, Nigerians should be very upset. I mean, if you look at the simple fact that 70% of our national budget goes towards <laughs> feeding a million people, 70% of the national budget is there to service government only. That's a million people out of 261, uh, 216 million people. 70% of the budget, I mean, that's criminal. Reduce the size of government, first of all. And that would even free up a lot of money. Selling government assets doesn't help in any, in any way, shape or form. Nigeria should not be selling its assets. It should be remanaging its assets, finding the right kind of people. If you go to any foreign country that wants to, uh, that really values itself, it brings in expertise, not necessarily its locals. Uh, look at what's happening to NMPC. 
the subsidies have been put in place, 18 billion naira a day. I mean, the number is ridiculous. Um, we just don't have a, an opposition that is challenging government saying, how can we be using 70 million liters or some ridiculous amount of fuel every year when the number is actually around 28 to 30? Um, and we're, we're exporting this to our neighboring countries. There's a grand theft of Nigeria going on, and that money should be brought back. I mean, a president like myself, because I have no, no allegiance to anybody and because YPP is not there, been in power for a long time, I would, I would go for revenue restitution. There's a lot of theft going on in this country. And, and basically, with all due respect, I would lock people up until they put that money back. <laughs> Nigeria has been stolen from us. And you need somebody who understands what's going on. An economist will do this. You cannot expect us to keep taking our national resources and giving a few and let the many suffer. Right. How can you sell a national asset like an NPC? The people who took those subsidy funds have just returned it back into the country and are buying an asset that looks like it's moribund. It's, it's, it's madness. I, I mean, uh, this whole subsidy issue is a theft that needs to be looked into. So that's one, CBN's exchange rate. I mean, why would anybody who's got a brain in their head take dollar at 400 when the black market is at 750 and go and trade with it and expect that within a year I'll return that money and, and with all the struggles of export and import and the ports being closed and insecurity. I mean, a smart person would take that money and round trip it four or five times. You can't do that. We need a single exchange rate. This will really right. stabilize the economy completely. It's madness that we do these sort of things. And it's just for a few people to enjoy the riches of this country. And it okay. needs to stop. And so, it's politics. <clears throat> So I, I hear you and, and I understand the fact that it's, it's always seemed easy to know the solution when you're not in the system. Mm. Um, I remember our current administration promised everything promisable before the mm. power. Mm. So we're going yes. to reduce the cost of dollars, we're going to do all the roads, petrol will be so, 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 and so. And when they got into power, the first four years was... The situation was really bad. The economy is really bad. We had no idea how terrible the situation is. There was a lot of excuses even till now. How, how prepared are you, you know, in terms of understanding how serious the challenges are? And what would be your top three um, areas to deal with if you do become president? Well... When I do become president, I think the most important thing is to get Nigerians to buy into the kind of leadership style that I would want to, to have. Um, as a businessman, I consider myself a chief executive officer, and I'd want to be the CEO of Nigeria. I'm not looking to be a politician, because what delays you, what, what hampers progress, is when you are you know, horse trading for political gain. Um, somebody needs to take Nigeria seriously and understand that look, we have a, an incredible opportunity to be a world leader, but raping this country of its resources and, and, its, and its value um, is just not the right way to go. We took eight months to find ministers um, in, in, in 2015. They, they were not prepared. Um, when, you, when you prepare yourself for leadership, you must prepare with all the eventualities in your mind. And yes, you can make promises, but you know what? If they've do not done it before, what makes you think they're going to do it when they get there? If they haven't built power stations, what makes you think they're going to uh, give you power? If they've not been in the modern military system, what makes you think they're going to understand what security is? If they've never had a business, how do you, how do you provide jobs? You know, we, we take a lot of things for granted. We expect government to do things for us. But it's about time we started finding leaders that want to do things for the people, to serve the people. And, and mm. that's one of the reasons why I'm, I'm very convinced that a YPP-led Malik Adol Ibrahim administration would be there to serve the people because we just don't have any kind of allegiance politically. We would fight the system. Right. It may not be okay. very popular, okay. but the results would be Let great. Let me get a few more questions in for you. Sir. Yes, sir. so there's a message on YouTube sure. that says, this man is even too gentle for Nigeria. You know, you're soft-spoken and uh -huh. you have the idea that Nigeria uh -huh. needs a very tough <laughs> person to handle it. Yeah, my question fire. is, um, the, si the way the system has been designed, is designed to uh, frustrate any idea 
that does not come from the system. Now I'm talking about the cabals, and we cannot pretend like we do not have the people who believe that they own Nigeria. If you get into power, have you envisaged that these people may want to sabotage you? And what is the plan to stay above and do your job? You know, uh, I have a friend of mine who became uh, a leader in his country. I try not to mention the names. But as soon as he got in, he locked up all those that he, he knew and was just, just knew had, had really betrayed the country and stolen. He was able to get $100 billion back. Um, you know, I speak softly, but I carry a big stick. I wasn't in the, in, in the military sector because I was a, I was a weakling. Um, uh, shouting doesn't get you anywhere. Doing is what counts. So there's a time to talk and there's a time for action. And as it says in the Bible, uh, you know, there's a time for everything. So um, I'm not worried about um, luring people into feeling comfortable. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm quite <laughs> familiar with what I need to do to change the environment. And I intend to do so. Uh, so help me God. It's not, uh, this is not for a few. The cabal is cabal by name, you let them rule. Um, once you're president of this country, you have the power to do the things you need to do for the people. It's not about vengeance. That's why I said restitution. I would go after everybody that has money, pay the money back. If not, I'd use the full extent of the law and, and of course, within the human rights. But I'd still do my job. Uh, if I get sworn in, I right. get sworn in to do a job. And okay. that's, I've always done that. Okay, so I'd like to test what your cabinet will be like. Who is your running mate and, you know, what's his pedigree? And um, what would your cabinet look like? Yes. Hello, sir, are you there? Oh, Hello, sir. Well, I'm running mate. He's a lucky because he's grassroots. Hello? Okay, we didn't hear you. Can Go you ahead. hear me? Yeah, start over, please. Yes, uh, Michael Casaracci is my uh, running mate. He's an economist. He's got a doctorate in, in uh, business administration. I need somebody who, by the constitution, the vice president is, is in charge of the, the economy and the uh, sort of the, the, the resetting of Nigeria's economy, and, and I like him for that. Um, my cabinet would be young and active, people who have done things in the, reach, in the environment of, in which I would put them into um, the ministries. If you're a doctor, you'd be in health you, or, or have some kind of healthcare background. If you are um, you know, a lawyer, you, you go into the justice. I wouldn't put a, a lawyer into power or, 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 <laughs> or uh, any of the other things that I've seen in, in this last administration has been laughable. 50%, um, um, and, and I want to, to promise this, women are 50% of our population and they gave birth to the other 50%. And I would like my, my administration to reflect that very strong, very Nigerian thing that women are part of our economy. And um, our women globally <laughs> have outshunned the men in many ways in, in all sort of government agencies or NGOs or, or world bodies. And um, they deserve to be in power at home. And um, certainly not just a woman because she's a woman, but certainly we have some bright souls, amazing women in every field. And I'd want to reflect that in everything my administration does. Right. We have to let you go here. But what, what are your final words to Nigerians who are listening to you this morning? Because many would say they haven't heard of YPP. So what, what would you like them to do this morning? Have they heard, you, heard from you? I think the most important thing you can do is to, to do the research, to look at what we've done, to look at who the party is. Um, we're not a lot tied to anybody. So we have the people's work to do. Our motto is service to the people for the greater Nigeria. And I believe that if you look at my background, it's very varied from music to sports, to the military, to power. Um, I'm a small boy in Nigeria, I'm 59 in December. I've done a lot. I'm probably better known outside this country than I am inside. But my pedigree, my antecedents, and my business, my business uh, acumen and, and awards should be able to tell Nigeria that look, just like in anything that we do, whether it's our music or our sports, uh, Nigerians rise to the top. But Nigerians need to give Nigerians a chance to, to, to um, get this country back. Right. And people like myself, and especially <clears throat> the young people of this country, need to take control. Right. Thank you so much, sir. It was a pleasure having you on the show. And we wish you all the best in the Thank coming Thank you very elections. much.
That's all we can take on this. When we come back, we'll take Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Come closer. A little bit more. Perfect. I have exciting news for you. You asked for it and you got it. Your favorite breakfast show, Your View, will be going to two hours. We're going to have in-depth analysis of the newspaper review and more conversations on the hot topics. The ladies of Your View and I will be staring up our guests to get in-depth into all the various topics. And you, our viewers, will have the opportunity to call in and share your views. After all, it's Your View. Join us on Your View, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. for a fantastic conversation. Don't miss it. TVC Communications, we're all about our audience, millions of viewers, listeners, and readers every day all around Nigeria. Our two TV stations are among the most watched in Nigeria. TVC News is our award winning 24 hour national and international news channel headquartered here in Lagos, broadcasting live from our custom-built, state-of-the-art news headquarters. TVC, the top-rated family entertainment channel, is the place for fun, music, and information. With our breakfast show, Wake Up Nigeria, the all-female chat show, Your View, the best soaps and dramas from Nolly, Bali, and Hollywood, music and entertainment blast, courtesy East Flash, and of course, award-winning news and current affairs. It is all here. With the news bureau and studios around the country and the ability to go live anywhere, anytime, we are first for breaking news in Nigeria. Awarded the NMMA TV Station of the Year, TVC News is the station of choice for news that is first, accurate, balanced and reliable every time. TVC and TVC News, watched by over 4.5 million people in Nigeria every day on Terrestrial, DTH, DTT, OTT, and available to viewers in the UK on Sky TV. Watch all of our world-class programs on TV, online, and on our app. TVC and TVC News, the best entertainment and news for Nigeria, on TV and online. And when you can't watch us, listen to us. 102.3 Max FM Lagos and 90.9. Max FM Abuja are now ranked among the most listened to radio stations in Nigeria. Now, with over 1.5 million listeners every day, we're the people's favorite radio station. Best hit music, best on air talent. Max 102.3 hit music for Lagos and Max 90.9 hit music for Abuja. We are your home for that fun, entertainment, and hit music. In Lagos, TVC, our leading family entertainment TV channel, has a 47% market share. But this is just the start of our journey as we plan to add even more services to entertain and inform our ever-growing audience. Thanks for being part of the TVC communication story. Hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail. Or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues and last but not the least a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate and yes you guessed it women so if you catch the drift then you're on to something we will provide you with the right insights into most of your curiosities right here within this beautiful cocktail we call the Black Table. Hmm.
Thanks for staying with us. That's all we can take on the show today. See you tomorrow. Bye for now.